Greetings to all of you, my dear sisters and brothers, and my dear friends, a warm welcome to all of you from your pastor, Yeti. Wednesday, we're going to talk about a further devotional study, values. The beginning of the Bible does more than reveal something about God's character and nature though that should always be among the first things we look for in Scripture. It also reveals something about God's desire and rights. A creator always has rights to determine what becomes of the creation. The creation story reveals some things that God values. For example, he values creativity balanced with order and design. He does not create things willy-nilly. There also seems to be a structure to his creation process. But the process is not really a model of efficiency. This God values structures and order, but he seems content to take his time, to linger over things without feeling a need to rush or hurry. It's not that he wastes time, but he is not a slave to the clock. There is order and structure but diversity seems to be favored over efficiency in God's economy of creation. The things he creates are far from uniform. There is no cookie-cutter assembly line producing leaves in heaven, though that would probably speed the process up considerably. Each leaf is unique, individual, and different. Each flower, each snowflake, each person appears to be handcrafted by God. Furthering our theory that God is not primarily interested in efficiency, it appears that God prefers a rhythm of work and rest to a demanding work schedule. A being powerful enough to create something from nothing could certainly have created everything at once. The God of the Bible did not. He measures himself, creating just enough for one day, not feeling the need to do too much. And then he rests. He doesn't need to rest. He isn't tired. He chooses to rest. He values rest as much as he values work. The way God's creation of humans is described reminds us that humans are special, unique among God's other creations. And only humans bear the image of God and as such are to be valued above all other forms of creation. We have an inherent dignity that can only be defended from a correct understanding of the first two chapters of the Bible. We should notice, too, that it is not merely the male gender of the human species that enjoys this privileged place above all creation. Eve was created to be Adam's companion, his partner, not his mate or his servant. Humans, male and female, enjoy equal status from God's perspective. 
Perhaps the most interesting thing to notice is that, above everything else, God values. He seems to prize community. As God creates, He steps back and declares things to be good. But then He notices something that isn't good. Hmm. Adam is alone. Amid the beauty and diversity of creation, there is no suitable companion for Adam until another human is made. In addition to being a new creation, Eve brings a new creation into the garden, the creation of community. God doesn't merely want us to be rightly related to Him. He wants us to be rightly related to one another as well. Community is a prominent theme throughout the Bible. Creativity, order and design, diversity, rest, people, community. These are the priorities of God's heart as it revealed in the first two chapters of the Bible. Are they ours as well? You know, beautiful people, I'm always so curious about your thoughts. Blessings to all of you, my dear ones. This is your pastor, Yari. Bye.